Hello there, and welcome to a numbers edition of Apple a Day. This is my first video on reference functions in Apple Numbers. Today, I'm going to cover the sort and sort by functions. So let's jump right in, starting with sort. These sort functions let you take a group of cells, also referred to as an array, and sort them by a specified row or column. So I have a numbers document open with some sample data, a list of 80s movies, and let's say I want to sort these by the year they were released. I'll click on the first empty cell and type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in sort and press return, and you can see that this function takes four parameters. The first parameter, called array, is the range of cells that will be included in the sort. We want to sort this complete group of movie data, so I'll click on the first cell on the top left and drag down to the last cell on the bottom right. So now we want to pick a column to sort by. So I'll press the tab key to go to the next parameter, which is the sort index. Now because we're sorting rows of data, we need to select the column to sort by. If I type in a 1, that will sort by the first column in the array. Now we want to sort by year, so that's column 2. So I'll type in a 2 for the sort index. I'll press tab again to go to the next parameter, which is the sort order. If I click on the drop-down arrow, it displays two options, ascending or descending. And you can see that ascending is the default sort order, so if I leave this as is without making a selection, it will sort in ascending order. I'll press tab to move to the last parameter, which is called sort by. Clicking on the drop-down arrow reveals two options, sort rows and sort columns. The default is sort rows. So I won't bother making a selection since that's exactly what we want to do. We want to sort this by the row. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So let's see what happens when I press return. The original data, which is specified in the array parameter, is left unchanged. That data is not sorted. Instead, Numbers has duplicated the data and sorted it by the sort index and sort order specified in the sort function. The green stripes in all of these cells indicate something called a spill range. So technically, the, the only cell that has data is the first cell which contains the sort function. But in order to display the results of the sort, it has to spill out into the adjacent cells, and that's known as the spill range. And just looking at these results, it appears that the sort worked. These are indeed sorted by year. One cool thing is you can always go in and change the values in your source data and the sort results will update to reflect that change. I'll change the diehard year to be 1979 and let's see if it gets moved up to the top of the sort results. As soon as I press tab or return, the sort function updates to include the change. And you can see that diehard is now at the top since 1979 is the very first year in this sort order. I'll change it back to 1988. Okay, so let's make a change and sort by the IMDB rating. I'll double click on the cell containing the formula. I'll change the sort index from a 2 to a 5 to sort by the IMDB rating column. And I want to see the highest rating first, so I'll also change the sort order to descending. I'll press return to see the results. And you can see that these are now sorted by the rating from highest to lowest. So to make this more of a real world scenario, you might not want to see two copies of the data in your spreadsheet. You might just want to see only the results of the sort. One way to separate these is to have two tables, one with the source data and another with only the sort results. I'll scroll down and you can see that I have another table with a sort function already entered. That doesn't necessarily hide the source data, but it does keep them separate. And you can see that the array references the first table. But if you do want to keep the data within the same table, you can simply hide the columns containing the source data. I'll go back up to the first table and select the first five columns which contain the source data. I'll click on this drop-down arrow to view the options. And about halfway down, there's an option to hide selected columns. I'll select that, and there you have it. A table which now only shows the sorted results. I can still modify this function to change the sort column. I'll change it to a 1 and put it back to ascending. And now it's sorting by the movie title. If you want to show the hidden columns, just click on the drop-down arrow in any column heading and select Unhide All Columns. 
So before we move on to the sort by function, I'll quickly demonstrate how to sort columns instead of rows. I've got a sheet already set up, and here you can see that the data is flipped, showing one movie per column. Here we want to sort by the column. I'll do this very quickly. I'll type in an equal sign to bring up the formula editor. I'll type in sort and press return. I'll choose the source data cells for the array. Press tab to move to the sort index. And now instead of using the column to sort by, we're gonna use the row. Title is row one. So if I want to sort by rating, I'll enter four since it's the fourth row. I'll press tab to move to sort order. And this can be left at the default ascending order. I'll press tab again to move to sort by, and this I need to change to columns. I'll press return, and it worked. The data is sorted by the MPAA rating. And just like before, if I wanted to, I can hide the source data. In this case, I wanna hide the rows. So I'll select the rows, and click on the drop down arrow, and choose hide selected rows. I do think that most sorting will be done by row, but I did wanna show how columns could be sorted as well. Okay, so moving on to sort by. So what's the difference between sort and sort by? Well, sort by works pretty much the same as sort, except you can sort by multiple columns of data. Let's say I wanted to sort by rating and then title. Essentially, that means it will group all of the ratings together, like PG, for example, and then sort those that are PG by the title within that group. So you'll see all of the PG movies in alphabetical order by title, assuming title is my secondary sort column. Let's try it out. I'll type in equals again and then type in sort by and press return. And just like with sort, we have to select the source array of data. So I'll do that. I'll select the same data. I'll press tab to go to the second parameter, which is called sort by array. Now with sort, we entered in the column number as the sort index but for sort by, we have to select the range of cells to sort by. Here, I'll select the range of the MPAA ratings to sort by, and then press tab to move to the sort order. I'll select ascending. So any additional sort by array in order to sort by a secondary column is added after the sort order. So I'll type in a comma after the sort order parameter, and numbers will add a new sort by array parameter and this will be the secondary sort column. Here, I'll select the range of movie titles to sort by. Note that the sort arrays need to contain the same number of rows as the source data, otherwise you'll get an error. I'll type in another comma and the sort by parameter is added. I'll just leave this as the default, which will sort by ascending. So that's all I need to do to sort by two columns. I'll press return and check out the results. You can see that the MPAA ratings have been sorted and grouped together. And within those groups, the movie title is sorted. You can see that the alphabetic sort order of the movie titles start over when the rating changes from PG to PG-13, and again from PG-13 to R. So that's sorting by two columns, primary sort and a secondary sort. So let's do one more. I'll delete this formula and start over. I'll type in equals again, and then sort by. I'll select the same source data for the array. I'll select genre for the first sort by array. I'll leave the sort order to the default value of ascending. I'll enter in a comma after that sort order. And for the second column sort by array, I'll choose the MPAA rating. I'll enter another comma to bring up the sort order, which again, I'll leave as the default. I'll add another comma to bring up a third sort by array parameter and here I'll select the title range. One last comma to bring up the sort order, which again, I'll leave as the default value for ascending. And that's it. I'll press return and check the results. So here you can see all the genres are grouped together. And within the genre groups, the MPAA ratings are grouped. And then within that group, the movie titles are sorted. So looking at drama, we have one PG-13 and the rest are R-rated. And within these R-rated movies, they're sorted alphabetically by movie title. After The Breakfast Club, the sort order resets because the genre changed to horror. And of course, as we did with the sort function, we can hide the columns containing the source data. I'll select A through E and click on the drop-down arrow and choose Hide Selected Columns. So that's it for sort and sort by. 
Very useful functions when you want to leave your source data intact. Well, that wraps it up for today. And as usual, you can leave any questions you might have in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name's John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.